Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all good? I hope so. Listen, let's get into this commentary right quick. We're still talking about Stormy and Miss Melody Cherie. And everything I'm saying in this video is in my opinion. I'm not making any kind of claim or rendering any judgment. I'm just merely reporting my opinions of the situation. The Copyright Act of 1976, Section 107, gives me fair use of this commentary that I'm about to speak on. And let's get into it. Okay. So, on the last video, we talked about the things that Story put in her stories where she's kind of like laying out all the things she's gone through within this last year or so, probably going back to 2020, right? So we talked about that. So today, it looks like I was on point with what I said in regards to the conversations that were going to be had about Stormy's IG stories. Listen, I be reading, reading, and my comprehension skills are on point. Like I said, I'm a free thinker who thinks critically. When it comes to this story situation, as I stated before in the other video, this is her truth. She is speaking from her experience. I'm on the outside looking in. So all I can speak up is what I've seen from the outside. And I've seen screenshots of her mom talking about Melody. I've seen how she came for Mel on the show and on the reunion, on interviews with Carlos. But not one time did I see Stormy check her mom. She tried to do a little sum sum at the reunion, but I did see her say that she can't control her mom. Her mom, somebody that she has direct access to. But she think that Mel can control over 600K plus people. That she don't know. And we know that moms that grown. Some of them will listen to you. Especially if they feel like they embarrassing you in any way. And then you have the ones that feel like. Look I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what you say. And what can you do after that. Right. So Mel has even said herself. That the Melanie just tell her what to do. They don't listen to her. And she about scared of them herself. She said that one time. When she was talking to Brittany. So, what makes you think that they'll listen to Mel? Now, hold up. Well, a few might. Because you do have that group within the Melometers who operate off of I'm on what Mel is on. They move according to how Mel moves. But then, you have that other group who moves to the beat of their own drum. For instance, remember when Mel and Lauren were on live? And she was showing us how to use the 7th Avenue beauty facial products. And they were having a conversation. And they got on the topic about folks trying to come for the millimeters. And Mel said something along the lines of, you got folks that you're actually connected to that you could say to them, hey, lay off Mel. Just lay off of her. Okay? Y'all remember that, right? So, if Mel were to come out and say, hey, y'all, Stormy wanted me to tell y'all to lay off of her. There is that group. Who will just off the strength of what Mel said. But that other group I was talking about. They going to be like uh yeah nah. That ain't going to happen. Now Mel you know we rock with you. But there are just some folks who will forever get this smoke. Because they always trying to play the victim and come at folks sideways. So we not about to lay off old, off old girl. It just ain't going to happen. So if that was the situation. What would Stormy want Melody to do after that? Because she asked the folks to lay off you, but they told her basically, you can just stay over there and be cute, but she gonna forever get this smoke because she always on some BS. So there's really nothing that Mel could do if that was to happen. It'll be just like Stormy not being able to do anything with her mama. Now, Let's get into the harassing, bullying, and stalking. If anybody know what that feels like, it's Melody. She's been going through that since 2019. The same way folks say Stormy was ugly. They call Mel ugly and funny looking too. Side note, that's one of the reasons why folks were going in on slow when she tried to throw that slick shade about her son not being funny looking. She knew what she was doing and so did male supporters. That's why they were on her head top. 
Now back to the lecture hand. Yes. Folks talked about Mel too. They talked about her wigs, her lashes, call her apple head, stuck up, fake, pathetic, slow. They call her S-T-U-P-I-D. They call her D-U-M-B and they call her ignorant. They felt like she was ignorant for fighting for her marriage. They felt like she was desperate and trying to hold on to a man who had developed a whole new relationship. And he is the one who labeled it as a relationship. They felt like it shouldn't have taken it long to choose herself and walk away from him. Some folks said that she was staying so that AC wouldn't win. And if you remember, Carlos asked her the exact same thing at the season three reunion. Folks called her a fool for letting a man she knew was cheating, regardless if he said that he had stopped or not, raw dog her, not knowing what he could have brought back. And then they really went in on her when she got pregnant. Even Tisha, even Tisha came for her at the Galatine event and said he was cheating on you for years and you had a baby by him. Y'all remember that? And sidebar, when Tisha said that, I felt like she was waiting for that moment. I feel like she was practicing that line for a minute. Because that was one thing, in my opinion, that she couldn't copy from Mel. And I said this in a video way back. One of the ones I had to put on private. But anyway, she had copied her makeup, her hairstyle, her outfits, her cadence. But she was angry at Mel, in my opinion, for getting pregnant because she couldn't. And that was because her husband stole that from her. He got clipped without having that final discussion with his wife. He snuck out with his brother and Sadaric, even though Sadaric backed out and had it done. And I feel like she been waiting when she said that it just felt like she was waiting on that moment. To me, in my opinion. Now back to Mel. From season one, Kid's sister came for her because she felt like she was too bougie. Tisha felt like she was elevating and leaving them behind in a way. And Marceau felt the same, in my opinion, because he once made the remark that Mel was reaching new heights. But when that happens, you're supposed to reach back and pull the others with you. And when he said that, I was like, she already did that when she brought y'all tacky tails on the show. And I bet that's one of her biggest regrets. Everything else is on you from that point. Then that whole group turned their backs on her when Martel recruited, recruited them to be his flying monkeys. Not only that, they knew before she did. Let 1.0 tell it. At their reunion. And then in the first season. In the episode after they came back from the wedding. Kimmy told Mel that she hadn't checked on her. Because Mel looked like she was okay. As if she didn't know that sometimes. Smiling does not mean that you're happy. Sometimes it's just a person trying to stay strong. Then Tisha threw the BMWs in Mel's face. When Mel won't call Martella a lie about the 20 girls. Then the spud potato came for her kids, Sugar Mama's paternity, and males for JJ. In the first season, 1.0, 2.0, and they 0.5 brother tried to come for Mel's mama, talking about an S tape. And wait a minute. Look, another sidebar. Y'all, y'all don't, don't get mad at me, okay? When they first brought that up, this is in the scene where Miss Van came to visit. After Mel had the baby. And they were talking about all the stuff happening on social media. And Miss Van mentioned the lie about the tape, right? Now, I never thought, and I know I said this before in the earlier video, but I never thought that they were talking about Miss Van. And the reason I never felt that is because of how uncomfortable Martel got when they brought it up. It was his facial expressions. The way he kept shifting his eyes and perching his mouth. Then you fast forward to when Carson dropped the revenge P plot and some of the things that Martel was saying. And then the point five brother came back saying he lied. I was like, okay, 
my suspicions make me feel like I'm onto something. Because when I think back on it, Mel was ready to bounce at that time. She was ready to dip out after the first season, remember? And Martel was pissed about that. He was stalking and harassing that lady, pulling up on her out of the blue. And I feel like, and this is all in my opinion, I'm merely speculating. I feel like he put that RP plot in motion back then and pulled his flying monkeys in on it. I do. This is my opinion. This is what I feel. And seeing his body language that day when Miss Van was there and she brought that up looking nervous. He was looking nervous and uncertain about what Miss Van might say or what all she knew as if he didn't want Melody to figure anything out. Just made It just made me give him the side eye. Then when Mel pulled up on Marceau at Black when they were still, you know, in the building phase of it. And she said, you going on social media talking about you got a tape of my mama. And he said, I didn't say your mama. I said somebody's mama. When he said that, I was like, yeah, I don't know what this is, but I don't think it's what they think it is. And then when Tisha got mad at her mom for trying to talk to Mel when Mel walked out of Jalen's graduation party and Tisha told her mom, Mel is not innocent. And even her mama was shocked that she said it with such vitriol. Then to have Destiny coming out later saying, if I end my relationship with Martel for cheating, I have to end the relationship with you for the same reason. And she told Mel, I know where your bones are buried. And that's when Maurice shut her down. Yeah, all that stuff confirmed my feelings that the so-called tape was always about Mel. And they just used their deranged brother to help them with the facade that it was about Miss Van. That's just my opinion. That's me speculating and just putting the things together as I saw them right. So, yeah. Even though that was a sidebar, those were also a, a few more examples of how Mel has been bullied and harassed by folks that she once thought were her friends. But she held it down. She may have, you know, been shattered, but she didn't break and never folded. She continued to push through the BS. And I think one of the biggest disappointments of all would be when she realized that the man she loved with all her heart. The man she was deeply in love with was a lie. He was in secret competition with her. And not only that, he was never the man he pretended to be. It was all a performance. And the reason I say that is because in the scene where they were on their way to one of Mel's speaking engagements, he asked her to tell him who she wanted him to be. And Mel said, I want you to be who you want to be. And he responded back with, well, who I want to be is probably not who you're going to want me to be. So I need you to tell me who you want me to be. When he said that, I felt like it was getting harder and harder for him to keep up that lie of the perfect husband and father. The real him had been activated. And we talked about AC's Jezebel spirit that, you know, tapped into his Jezebel and Ahab spirit and he could no longer keep his real person suppressed. Yeah. Mel has had some good days. She's had some hills to climb. She had some weary days and sleepless nights. But when she looked around and thought things over, all her good days outweigh her bad days and she didn't complain. Shout out to Reverend Paul Jones. Now, we rarely heard Mel complain about all the mess she was going through on and off the show. She took it on the chin, showed up and did her job. And even though, you know, like we could see it in her face when she looked tired or that something was probably going on. She never would say it. She never got on her stories like write in my diary with me. Dear diary. Am I wrong for wanting to knock the taste buds out of my coworkers' mouths because they keep trying me? You know, like, nah, she didn't do that. <laughs> she never did that. She didn't. She just embraced the love from her supporters who she herself has said have helped her through a lot of the tough times. And y'all really want her to shut out her support system? Well, I hate to tell you, 
but it ain't gonna happen. And another thing that ain't gonna happen is this scheme that y'all trying to set up to come to us with the BS by trying to use the millimeters as y'all storylines. That's the craziest thing ever, in my opinion, because it makes y'all look so pathetic. But I feel like the content craze will really black out the show and or leave y'all out of their reviews altogether before they let that happen. Because they not about to let y'all eat off of them. And y'all over here striking pages and channels and mess like that. And the crazy thing is y'all whine about content craves and fans not keeping it about what's on the show. But here y'all are making stuff that's outside of the show your storylines. Chad, the struggle is real. Like I said before, unscripted but scripted. This is a bunch of mess. And I still feel like when Carlos came down to Huntsville about a month ago, allegedly there was a sidebar conversation that didn't include Melody and y'all came up with this old amateur tale plan to come for male supporters. And it probably started after Mel shut y'all down at the reunion about the millimeters. And have y'all ever considered that maybe, like just maybe, the people that's coming for y'all aren't necessarily male supporters? But possibly, you know, that people that just don't like you, you know, maybe that's what it is. So in a way, y'all are still bullying and harassing Melody. Only this time, y'all think it's going to be by way of her supporters. And I don't think y'all really know who y'all messing with. Because this ain't going to go the way you think it is. The millimeters, as well as the male supporters, love her enough to make the ratings drop so low that the show will get knocked out of that number one spot that Carlos loves to brag about, as if there's really any other competition on own, that they'll cancel Love and Marriage Huntsville. The millimeters and male supporters know that Melody, she going to be all right. She has her own network and enough connections to start a new show on another network if she wanted to. I don't know what happened down there on the islands between Mel and Stormy for Stormy to come back and make that post in her stories. But I'm ready to find out. And then Mel posted in her stories, quote, some things aren't for the weak. If you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen, end quote. So this made me even more intrigued because as my uncle loves to say, stay within your abilities, babe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so y'all. I don't know what went down on the islands. I don't. But I'm pretty sure they're going to let us know when the season starts. And hopefully it's not heavy, heavily edited the way Kingdom Rain Production loves to edit their stuff. And we get a lot of details about what happened. Because I don't know what happened. Like I said, I'm on the outside looking in. But one thing I do know when it comes to subliminals, in my opinion... That's for the week. I'd rather you say it with your chest and put some names with it. And let's stop doing this cordial mess, okay? Because for somebody like me, cordial is fake. You're being fake. And being fake is a great area. And ain't nobody got time for that. Okay? Y'all, get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about all of this. Please like, share, subscribe. And I'll talk to y'all later.